basically the same battery of arms that you just shot on the this is going to be another fun review PX4. This is your totally fun why is that because I love this handgun that's why guns I love the reviews are easy and finally I'm table topping the Beretta PX4 Storm finally this is a buy request video it's just taken me 10 years to get to it <laughs> Literally 10 years. I was getting PX4 Storm requests as soon as I started the Nut and Fancy project. And I didn't want to review the gun. I wasn't attracted to this oddball handgun. I wasn't. It looked kind of goofy to me and I wasn't digging it. So I was like, oh, I'll get around to it. And I did. It just took me a decade. <laughs> That's all. Let me say this though. If you think I'm going to say negative stuff about this gun, you're wrong. I'm going to start with this. Do any of you guys still own a Beretta, Beretta PX4 Storm? I know some of y'all do because you're watching this video. And if so, here's my advice to you. Don't sell it ever. It's awesome. I know. I'm surprised too. As a reviewer, I get two types of surprises. The good kind like this gun. It's kind of goofy looking, at least that's what I was thinking. I was kind of wrong. And the bad kind. I thought the gun would be awesome, and it shot horribly. Either way, it's getting tabletop, and the truth is going to come out in the review. This is the good kind of surprise. Shot great, we'll talk more about that. But if you own a PX4 Storm, dude, don't sell it. Pro tip from TMPDU. Just keep it. Keep it. It wouldn't be the money you'd get worth the money you got out of it. It's better for you to integrate it into your systems so here we go table topping it and I will thank Gunnies the great American gun store for allowing me to review this and this is a highly used police issued Beretta PX4 believe it or not in 40 cal which for a long time was the preferred caliber I still like it I like 40 doesn't suck it's fine I prefer 9 for its size efficiency if it's if properly loaded but how many rounds has this gun seen as a police issued firearm a used gun which by the way makes it super affordable I'll probably turn this one back to gunny so go in and ask for the nut and fancy px4 storm it'll probably be there if I don't buy it because I love this gun seriously I just don't have the money to buy it but if I did I, I might 40 cal used police gun which is interesting because I didn't really know the PX4 Storm was a police-issued gun. I didn't really think about it. I didn't see any departments carrying it. But there are several sheriff departments, police departments, no major ones. But they're out there and several countries that actually use the Breda PX4 as an issued sidearm. I thought that was kind of cool. And here's the really cool thing about it. Track record. So if you put it in the hands of officers, soldiers around the world, you're going to get more data. You're going to get track record. And those entities, whether it's a police department, sheriff department, an army or whatever, security force, they like data. They like to know, hey, this gun's going to perform well because it minimizes training and minimizes down armory costs and acquisition costs. There you go. Track record, dude, there's no replacing track record, and it takes a gun getting in the hands of, of, heck, thousands, millions of users. I've always said that. Incidentally, on the table, we got some really cool tabletop decorations. We got the TMP Shark Assisted Patch. I have told TD to order more. He told me he was. They should be in the web store sometime. We're not big in merchandising. We just do a little bit. So we are not all about TMP merchandising. We just do a little bit. And it comes in lit limited runs. It's just the way we are because we have other things we do, not just YouTube. This is an OV-10 patch, the kind my dad wore when he flew OV-10s in Vietnam. Two tours as a forward air controller. Uh, I like that, representing dad. Got some brass or some copper jackets there from some rounds fired. I forget which caliber that was. Cold Steel Rhino. Nixon Descender Dive Watch. Awesome. I need to get around to reviewing this soon. It comes in various colorations. It is... Very excellent. Really a good dive watch. And then we've got a Manix Lightweight. This is a Cutlery Shop Special Orange Edition. I think he sold out of these. Then we have a PT-809 <laughs> Taurus, dudes. This has been reviewed. It will probably post before this pistol review. But this is also a great gun. Amazingly, 
amazingly great for the price. I was super shocked. This was another good surprise. So this is a good kind of surprise too. Both guns being delayed in review because of my own prejudices, admittedly, but overcoming them by shooting extraordinarily well, accurately, reliably. PT-809 did it, and as you'll see again, the PX-4 did it as well. That makes me enthusiastic for these underdogs. They're both underdogs. PT-809, discontinued by the way. PX-4, not discontinued, still an underdog. Still a ghost pistol. No one talks about it. No one discusses it. It's not popular. Who knows? Maybe this video will put it on guys' buying list again. And like I said, it is still available in various flavors. The Breda PX4 Storm in 40 and 9mm. This again is a 40. They have a compact carry PX4 Storm. Has a larger magazine button. It's coated in sniper gray Cerakote, which is cool. I like that. And they say it's thinner. I haven't handled it and I haven't measured it, but I would always welcome a thinner pistol if I'm going to conceal carry POU it. Full size again, that's what this one is. They have a subcompact one, which I'm not totally enthusiastic for because it's still kind of a thickness issue. And I say that about the Glock 2627 as well. They're not super thin either. They're same width as the Glock 17, 22, 1.18 inches. But for whatever reason, Beretta came out with that to compete against the Glock 26, no doubt. But it has a tilt barrel, interestingly, not the rotating barrel that the other versions do, like this version does. Which is, by the way, an interesting selling point and one I like about the PX4. We'll talk about that in a second. And that subcompact one has a stainless steel barrel on it. Different fire control groups on the PX4s, and I think they outfit it for departmental use, like I mentioned earlier. This one is a Type G. It's a standard Beretta dealio so it's single action double action transition and then you have a safety hammer drop mounted on the slide just like the 92 m9 series so like i said a la beretta i've scrolled the variations across the screen i may do it later in the video too but you know click on the Brez website look around they do have some colorized versions which are cool kind of a second cool thing and i am glad it's still being produced and still selling who knows? Maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe you guys will show up and say, no way, man, the PX4 is super popular. And, you know, I have mine and I'm totally enthusiastic about it. I have no doubt guys will say that because I think the gun is excellent, like I said. But I just don't know if the world knows it. I think guys who own it know it. But that's two different things. You know, a gun, guys who own the PX4 will be enthusiastic. Guys who don't own it, like me, that was me, by the way, they'll go, yeah, I'm not interested in that. For whatever reason, you know, maybe it's a prejudice. There you go. Features. Yeah, rotating barrel. I guess we'll start with a field strip on it. And this is interesting. So the thing the rotating barrel does is it creates an inline feed for the round. So you see the locking channel. There's your locking block with integrated guide rod. Keep that lubricated, by the way. So... It's really cool how high the magazine is and how straight the rounds feed into this non-tilting, non-browning style of barrel. Different and interesting. And this is, an, again, one of my prejudices. And I don't know what it was, but when I read that it had a different way of doing it, I was like, I don't know. Because I'm a fan of the tilt barrels, for sure. Glock, Sig have it, and they work so great. Even with a can, they'll work good. But it's different, and so it took me a while to warm up to it. After shooting it, I see the advantages, and we'll look at it again and how it shot. Look inside here. On this heavily used PX4 Storm, departmental, which I think is cool. Bretta says it's impossible to put the gun back together incorrectly. I bet you I could prob probably figure out a way to do it. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's your steel guide ra rails right there. Look inside at the ejector internals of the PX4. And as you can see, takedown is uh, super simple. Even though it's a different design, no magazine disconnect, uh, field strip is excellent. And it's kind of got the Glock takedown levers. This is a la Glock all day long, these two right here. Picatinny rail, one slot Picatinny rail. You can see the serial number reviewed from Gunnies for TMP. 
forward slide serrations. Partially, you have a heavy sculpting going on here, angular cut towards the muzzle for both aesthetics and maybe presentation from holster. It gives it a unique look, maybe sheds a little bit of weight, which incidentally is 29 ounces with the magazine. That's not a super light polymer handgun, but neither are the XDs or a lot of other ones that I've reviewed, like the CZs. Some of those polymer guns are around 30 ounces, and I love those, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a pass for weight. And it's an older design, 2004. It's not a brand new design. It's, you know, 14 years old at this point. Let's pull the trigger on this. I'm going to start it with single action. Again, no magazine disconnect, which is excellent. I like the trigger and shooting it. I didn't have any problems with it at all. And I honestly don't know what it pulls in single action. I don't know. I'll guess uh, five pounds. Whoops. Six on that pull. Okay, six to six, four. A little bit heavier than I thought. And then the double action will be beyond the measuring capability. It's probably going to be super heavy. I don't know, 15 pounds or something. Uh, but it's smooth. Let's check reset on this. It's a pretty short reset on the PX4. Not to modern, like the latest standards. Like the latest standards would be a PPQ, a VP9, some of the other ones where reset be became a real issue with handgunners around this country at least. And so manufacturer answered and said, well, let's improve our reset on our trigger design. This predates that. Now, another thing I'll check too while we're here is trigger flex. There is some in the PX4. I'm holding the hammer, by the way, and just checking it. That's because it's a polymer trigger face. That's kind of a negative thing. I like aluminum or steel trigger faces for that reason. But with that said, I didn't really notice it in shooting it or pulling it right here on the table. I don't really see any flex going on to you. And that's in double action. In single action, definitely not. Here's your take up, by the way, in single action. There, there's quite a bit. There you go. Another minor criticism is the non-squared off trigger guard in the PX4 Storm. Not a showstopper, but I don't like it. I would put skateboard tape here. You guys know how I shoot. I'm weird that way. You guys won't care. Enough room in the trigger guard. No problem there. The magazine button is actually kind of small. It is reversible for lefties. And we do have the safety mounted on the slide for lefties as well. Hammer drop as well. So that's kind of cool, I mean, but it's a small button. I kind of wish it was a little bit larger. That's just me, undercut on the polymer frame. The traction provided as is on the PX4 is probably a little bit lacking. You can see this one's a little bit polished from holster wear, from officer use. Again, this is a police gun. No modifications made to it, and that's pretty standard with PDs around the country. They're not going to put like grip stuff on it. They want to keep it simple. They want to keep it factory, and they'll, they'll order the gun the way they want it, and they run it just like that. It's just simpler that way. If it ever goes to court and an officer involves shooting, it's easier to defend. That's just the way it is. And guys will get into a conversation now. Well, it's the same way as a civilian too, and they have a point. It, it is. This is a 40 again. The rounds with this one is 14 plus one and a nine mm, it's gonna be 17 plus one. So it's right there with the rest of its competition. Look in the heavily used magazine well of this PX4. No problems with the magazines or the base plates. Made in Italy, no big surprise there. Ring hammer on this of the PX4. It's a little bit stubby, the hammer is. So if you ever do a thumb cock, it's, it's prob probably not designed to be heavily used, the hammer on the PX4. No big surprise. It's a you know semi-automatic pistol. It's not designed that way. As opposed to, I don't know, a CZ-75, for instance. This one is. This one's designed to be part of the battery of arms. Kind of an interesting philosophical thing there. Here's a look at the top of the slide. And the sights are adequate. I think this, these have the night sights on them. I wonder how old these tritiums are. They're probably Tridges. Trigicon? I don't think they're Meprolites. They still glow adequately. I tried them in the night, but this is a PD gun, of course. That's why I had it. I don't like the, the shape of this. This is a cork. I like the safety on the, hand, on the slide. I don't like the mounting of that at any time. I've always said that. I even said that about the M9. 
but I can adapt. But this just has a sharp transition. So for you to grab it, you're doing this. So you're always here on the sharp edge. It, it could have been profiled so much better. I'm really surprised Beretta has not changed that. Maybe they have in the latest PX4s and I'm missing it. But I don't, I don't like the, the shape of this at all. It's, it's bad. It should be much more ergonomic. I mean, here again, CC75, just because it's here, something shaped like this. That's an ergonomic safety lever there. Again, this doesn't kill the deal for me, but it's just a consideration. Uh, overall, the gun handles and points very well, surprisingly. And it is kind of the albatross concept. The albatross is a very large seabird. It can fly for hundreds and hundreds of miles. Has a huge wingspan. You'll see albatross birds flying out in the ocean when there's no land anywhere. Very beautiful bird, seabird. But on the ground, they are ungainly. They have a hard time even taking off. They're falling on their face. They trip over themselves. They're big webbed feet. Albatross on the ground are just goofballs. But once they're airborne, they soar like the Dickens. <laughs> so yeah, it's albatross concept with a Beretta PX4. And so we're pretty much done with features review and all that. Now how did it shoot? How about it was sublime? It was re totally reliable. There were no stoppages whatsoever. And it was supremely accurate. Again, getting back to the rotating barrel. Beretta says they have tested this 150,000 rounds, speaking of track record, without stoppages. I have no way of verifying that. I don't know, but I am inclined to believe them. And again, it is adopted by armies and law enforcement agencies. That says a lot. They wouldn't adopt it and they wouldn't keep it or they would have pitched it if they didn't like it. Now, some PDs will run a gun for, I don't know, 10 years, 8 years, and then they just want something different. There's really no reason, and maybe this gun fell in that category. They're like, hey, we ran the PX4s. Maybe some officers were complaining about the safety, you know, lever, maybe the Type G fire controls, and they wanted something simpler. And there's a lot of factors that go into why PDs transition from one gun to another. Politics, too. And then, lo and behold, they go to a SIG. Maybe they go to a P320. Maybe they go to a Glock. Happens all the time. You talk about accurate though, yeah, it was accurate. This is standing 10 yards in the desert shooting gold dots. Look at this group. And I, I'm showing you the footage, bros. Federal 180 grain HST, holy cow, that's good. Good, good. I flew one round here, that was my fault. I, I don't know if I flinched or what, sometimes I suck. HST's gold dots. Look at that. Standing, I mean, that really is for a 40 cal. That's as good as I've seen out there. It's as good as a Glock 22 for sure, which is a tilt barrel design. I want to go fast on this. This, I think, was my second group, and I was learning how to shoot the gun. That's why I said learning. My group was not great. First shots, number one, not great. I'm learning the trigger, learn how it shoots, and then group three, boom. Brought it together, PX4, group, 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 all up arrows. I mean, this gun was one of the most accurate handguns I've shot of recent memory, the PX4 Storm. And that's in 40. In 9mm, it would probably be even better. I actually like shooting in 40, though. It, it shot great. Look at what I said here. Nice shooting. Lightweight trigger, I said. This is what I'm talking about, the Albatross. So you look at it on table and you go, that's a goofy gun. Get it airborne, get it to the range, bro, and then talk to me. That's what I would tell any of your PX4 Storm detractors, and I was one of them. You need to shoot it before you criticize it. Shoot it, carry it, and then talk to me. They will probably become a believer. Look at this group. Holy cow, these are tight groups. These are 10 yards standing. You're looking at the footage. This is why I want to buy this gun. It really is. This is like, dude, it's awesome. Uh, reliable, accurate, great track record. Is it a track record like Glock or SIG? No, it hasn't been in that many users' hands, or for that matter, the M92 or M9, but it's still better than a lot of commercially available pistols, like the, this, P, this PT-809, for example. Would I buy it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's been out long enough where you'll have accessories available for it. You have different holster options, different sight options, magazine options. And if you buy it used like this gun, you're getting it for a song and a dance. 
I mean, you might be able, uh, don't quote me on this, but you might be able to go out and score a, Beretta, a used Beretta PX4 Storm, either 9mm or 40. I would probably probably prefer 9, but I, I wouldn't turn my back on a 40 for a good deal. Maybe you get it for 250 bucks. A Beretta. Is it an ugly duckling? Yeah, kind of. Is it kind of an oddball handgun? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But dude, it's an albatross. If you let it spread its wings and fly, you too may become a believer. Nothing fancy. Okay. PX4, Jardine. Here we go. I went quick. Try long range. Go long. Nice. Oh, a little bit low. I jinxed you. <laughs> Still short. Wow. It's a sweetheart, isn't it? <clears throat> Not really what I expected. Me either. Really, really nice. Nice single action trigger. Really smooth. Even recoil wise, it's, it's, uh, it's a really smooth operating gun. I don't know if you recorded that earlier, but the action on that, it's got the bolt design into the barrel. That is, that's really cool. Yeah. Our rotating barrel. It's cool, huh? Yeah, cool gun. <laughs> cool gun. It's pretty lightweight, too. It's got a different look to it. I guess that's what, you know, when you pulled it out on the table, that's what threw me off was- It looks ugly, doesn't it's it? It's an ugly bugger. It's not pretty, but boy, it feels nice. It feels good in the hand and it really uh, operates. The, the characteristics, the recoil characteristics are really nice. Yeah. You can see this one's got a fair amount of wear. It's been I mean, shot it's been, a lot. Yeah, it's been shot. It's been holstered quite a bit. 